Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> We're going to call the meeting really quick. Good evening, everybody. We're going to call the meeting to order if we can stand for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening and welcome to the October 3rd work session legislative meeting 2019 of the North Hill School Board. I just want to mention that we did hold an executive session prior to the meeting this, this evening to discuss personnel and legal matters. And we are now uh, going to be entertained with a student performance, Mrs. Ms. Heidi Koenig and the Guitar Ensemble. So Heidi, all yours. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. everyone, for the opportunity. So this is the North Hill School Ensemble. We're going to present to you tonight London Derriere. You might uh, recognize it as the Danny Boy. five parts. And I'll tell you five over here actually drop their six string down one tone from E down to D. So it's just really nice, rich, low notes that go down. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, students. Thank you, thank you. Please. Okay. Tuesday, December 11th. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great job, students. Thank you again. Sound great.
Uh, Mr. Wilkes, I wanted to tell Ms. Coney that I, I remember when she started this group, and I think there were like a handful of kids there. So yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. plant some seeds. Thank you. Great job. Great. Okay, uh, we could now move on to board member comments, if there are any. Okay, I, ju I just want to make one uh, thing. We, we had uh, talked about, at least the board is aware of this, we've made a, a lot of internal improvements to our buildings, and a lot of that improvement has been done by our maintenance staff. And, some, and I know the public really doesn't get a chance to see this unless your child is in school. But I just want to congratulate and, and thank you to our maintenance staff. They've really done a tremendous job with this, with our buildings and things that we have them do, as, as opposed to contracting that work out, which could be so much more expensive. So kudos to them. Okay, we can now move on to uh, public comments on agenda items only. Uh, it looks like we have two folks who want to speak uh, this evening on uh, uh, one of the agenda items of flexible instruction. So, uh, Joe, do you want to start us off? If you would be kind enough to, when you folks get up there to state your name and address for the record. And um, I don't think we have to read our, our, uh, no. No. our report. Okay, so, so uh, you don't have to, we're not going to read it to you. You know the drill. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> hey, my name's Joe Muhall. I live at 188 Don Bay Drive. And the flexible instruction day is uh, on the schedule t uh, today. And, uh, well, let me preface this, too. This doesn't necessarily mean I'm against it. It means I have some questions, and I hope uh, some of these questions will be addressed uh, during the, uh, for the later discussion. And one, uh, point one, which uh, isn't necessarily most important, but when this was first brought up, I spoke about the private school transportation, that we could potentially have three or four instructional days, and maybe, the, maybe none of the private schools do, so we have to bus them four extra days, and will this cause any problems? Will this be an extra cost? Will this be less cost because they're busing less? Uh, will be no difference or our transportation manager have to be on call that day uh, the other question second question I bring up is the uh, special needs students now, I do, do see this line here about free appropriate public education the uh, individuals with disability education act and I'm not sure if that covers all the special needs children uh, how they're going to be uh, covered on these flexible days uh, also, students at the Beatty School, uh, obviously, there's a couple issues there. One, a lot of the things kids do at Beatty can't be just taken home and worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, so that caused an issue there, and we're with eight other school districts. So what happens if four do the flexible day and five don't do the flexible day? How are we going to handle that? How is Beatty going to handle that? Uh, <coughs> or are these kids just going to miss out on some instructional days and you know that's something we uh, need to address and I hope that's addressed in this plan uh, the other thing is I find kind of odd <laughs> seven days to complete assignments now my son just was chosen to speak uh, as one of the mental health awareness students so he missed I think three days of instruction and I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not sure if he was given seven days to make up what he missed, and that was a school activity. And uh, obviously, by even in this study, this is not an off day for the students. The students are present at school that day. So I'm not sure why we're looking at seven days to complete assignments. So. This is just some of the concerns I have, and hopefully these will be answered later in the day. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm just so glad you asked all those questions because Ellie is going to answer all of those for you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Joe. I appreciate Should I wait it. wait the do. end? <laughs> uh, we have next uh, Deanna Philpott.
Deanna Philpot, 29 Chapel Drive. Um, so I'm just like Joe. I just have some questions. Um, I'm not necessarily against this. I just read the application and just have some questions. Um, the first one I'll say, just in general from parents I've talked to, they'd like to hear more information on how that's going to work if they have an IEP. Um, and then I'd say then an, another question um, – PDE's website says their their advice for schools that do this is that teachers should be trained in virtual instruction and that parents should be trained on how these are going to work. Um, so I guess if we do end up implementing this this year, what is the plan to, you know, reach all the parents? Is it going to be a night like curriculum night or is it going to be something like a letter that goes home? And I know just from my work with working with school districts, a lot of school districts plan all their um, – all their PD days, you know, a year or so in advance. So do we even have the time to bring in the, tr the teachers to train them in virtual instruction um, as they recommend to do, to do this this year? And then um, my other two questions are just basically looking at this as, as a parent, um, how this is going to work for my family. So, you know, it's just me. I'm a single mom and I have a kindergartner and a first grader. So when I look at how this is going to work, um, I just, my first question is the application – talks about how the kids need to log in in order to have their attendance counted, but then we do have those seven days to complete it. And so I'm just, so do all the kids need to log in that day for it to count? Um, so then, you know, what does that mean for the kids that don't have access to the internet? Um, or do they have seven days to log their attendance and complete this assignment? So I'm just, I just want to um, have some clarification on that. And then I looked at the example lesson for the first graders, because that's, you know, where Miles is. And so that, I mean, that sample lesson doesn't seem that bad. It seems like something I could easily do. But that was just language arts. And so are we looking at a full day being language arts plus math? Like what else is there going to be in that day? How long do you expect? expect these kids to be working, let's say a parent does want to just get it done that day, how long are they at the computer, and then times my kindergartner that then needs to sit at the computer. Um, so I'm just looking for an idea of what a typical day is going to look like if we do this, um, especially for parents that are that just have the one parent home with the one computer. Um, yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, I'm sure we'll address all those questions. So thank you to both of you for that, those comments. Um, okay, we can now move on to the. Uh, I think that's it. That nobody else signed up. We can now move on to the approval of the uh, minutes. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this is the. I will make a recommendation. I mean, a motion that the board approve the minutes from the September 19, 2019 work session legislative meeting per the attached. Second. Uh -huh. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we've got our student reps here ready to go. Uh, Ellie, Hannah, who, who wants to go first? Okay. Could we make one comment? Yes. Please speak into the mic. Like you are? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as the school year continues to a great start, uh, students have begun to get involved in our school's various clubs and other after-school activities. Clubs such as the Hands for Service and the Student Council planned the first annual Jake Wardour Check Trunk or Treat, which will occur from October 26 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the middle school parking lot. This event will benefit Make-A-Wish and Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh Foundation. Also, future business leaders of America have offered its club members a trip to Penn State Barron on October 18th from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. to explore the various opportunities in career like throughout business. Our school has also just finished Say Hello Week, which promoted kindness throughout our school. Students were required to hand out five slips and exchange a hello with a fellow peer. Also, through a program called Stand Together, our school is able to learn about mental health and substance use. 25 students, including myself, went to the 9th through 10th grade English classrooms and had great conversations bringing awareness to these topics and how North Hills can better our school environment. Next, the Attorney General visited our school and talked with a few students about the app Safe to Say, which is an app that acts as an anonymous reporting system. They had discussions about how to better the app and how the students are using it at the high school. Also, currently during all lunch periods, our school has offered a job fair for our, us students with stores such as Hollister, Macy's, and Gap. Um, next, homecoming weekend was a blast for all of our students. From the football game to the dance, it proved to be a fun weekend. We have a pink out theme for this Friday's game to support the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. 
And then academically, our school will offer the PSATs on October 16th for all students during school in grades 10th through 11th. Thank you guys for your time. So good evening. So we have all adjusted to school now and we're back in the swing of things. And last Saturday was the homecoming dance and it was hosted in the middle school annex. And everybody had a great time and it was for students in ninth through 12th grade. Um, the September athletes of the month were Ronnie Nafizadak from football and Sydney Ryan from girls volleyball. The last boys varsity football game was the homecoming game against Gateway and North Hills lost with a score of 40 to seven. But the next home game is this Friday, October 4th at 7.30 p.m. against Mars at Marnarelli Stadium. The last girls varsity volleyball game was September 24th and where North Hills lost to Shaler at a score of three to zero. And they are currently playing in the middle school annex gym against Butler. The last boys soccer game was on September 28th against Swickley Academy and North Hills won the close game with a score of one to zero. The boys golf team fell to North Allegheny on September 25th with a score of 253 to 206 and their <coughs> final match was October 3rd against Quaker Valley. The girls varsity tennis team defeated Trinity High School on September 18th with a score of three to two. First singles, Emma Kim won her match with a score of eight to five. And first doubles, Veronica Shuley and Rachel Byrne defeated Trinity in their match with a score of eight to five. Their next home match is tomorrow at Penn Hills at the North Hills Tennis Courts. The band is playing at halftime at the football game this Friday against Mars, so be sure to be there, support the band and the football team. That's gonna uh, be on the radio too, uh, oh, okay. 1320, it's the game of the week. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's gonna be featured. Kind of game. Thank you ladies, everything going okay? Yeah. Yes. It's gonna look like a good year, okay great. <laughs> Thank you again. We could now, uh, we're going to now turn it over to Dr. Manorino for our superintendent's report. <coughs> okay, girls, next month we're going to do a better job of coordinating because a lot of what they said are some of the awesome things that I have in my report. Um, so should so, we move on? No, okay. not yet. <laughs> so next month, we got a month to get this together, all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so like the girl said, we had start with hello week. And so we had some really neat things going on at our schools. And one of the things that we did with the start with hello is that our National Honor Society and our Hands for Service Club students created this video about the importance of kindness and inclusion. And I wanted to share that with everybody, but this was played on the morning announcements. Start with hello week raises awareness about social isolation and educations in the community on how to prevent it through awareness, activities, events, student contests, and school awards. On Wednesday, September 25th, we will have a school-wide start with a low day. As a school, we will spend this day taking small but hopefully powerful actions to promote connectedness and inclusion. Social isolation is the overwhelming feeling of loneliness, being left out or treated like you are invisible. At every school and in every community, there are children who feel like they have no friends and quietly suffer through each day especially at lunchtime and other times when friends gather together. If you see someone alone, reach out and help. It starts with hello. Okay, and as they said, our newly formed Stand Together Club visited 9th and 10th grade English classrooms, spreading messages of kindness and inclusion while cultivating discussions to raise awareness about mental health and remove the stigma. So our middle school students wore green to show their support with Start With Hello and meeting their new friends, reaching out and helping others. One of the things that we did in some of our schools, and I think this is High Cliff. So High Cliff had their sidewalks chalked. And so when the students arrived that day, they had all these positive messages on their sidewalks, which I thought was a really nice thing for Start With Hello Week. And they were all messages of kindness and inclusion as our students arrived at the building. Also, whenever they arrived at the building, you see uh, Mr. Weber there giving high fives. Um, our teachers were dressed up and ready to welcome kids. And you can see one of our Ross officers welcoming kids as they arrived to the school on that school day. Ross Elementary students constructed a new Start With Hello bulletin board, and you can see that uh, this is in the hall area. This one is in the main office, I think. Yeah, chalkboard is in the office. It also updated the message of kindness and inclusion. So you can see what the theme of the message is here with the Start With Hello week is kindness and inclusion. 
Ross Elementary School, that one's really neat. I don't know why I clicked through that one. Okay, so we had a group of students that in first grade started their own Duck, Duck, Goose game. Why? Because it takes a lot of people to play it. And so they included as many students as they could, and they did it on their own. No adult prompted them to do it. Nobody told them to go and do it. They wanted to find a game that they could play that could include as many students as they can. And so they created their own Duck, Duck, Goose game um, outside of it on the playground that day. Third graders at Westview took part in the icebreaker activities to get to better know their classmates. And then you can see this is the main stairwell in McIntyre Elementary School. And they constructed a start with hello post-it wall with messages of hello and bright colors and post-its as you make your way up the steps. McIntyre students also participated in a Wear Green Wednesday to show their support for Start With Hello. And they sat with someone new at lunch and played with their new friend during recess. And like they said in the video, it just starts with hello. All you have to do is go say hello to somebody. And so our students are really embracing this idea and finding a bunch of different ways in order to make that happen. As the girl said, we had the Attorney General here also. Um, Josh Shapiro visited us to talk to our students about the Safe to Say Something program. Brittany Klein, who was the director, also sat down with, our, with 20 of our high school students. Just had an open and honest discussion about the Safe to Say system. Is it working? What can we do better? Um, those types of things, which was a really good day. Uh, to talk about this safe to say because I believe this is on its uh, it's ending its first year So they were kind of to gather information and feedback from the students about the program Really need international walk to school day So we had safe kids Allegheny County organize a pedestrian safety event at Westview Elementary this week for international Walk to school day and volunteers from UPMC and FedEx joined crossing guards and police officers from Westview the county and the state in order to monitor students walking to school. This was all part of pedestrian safety day and then an assembly at Westview followed. It was homecoming and here are our, here's our queen Chloe Wiseman and the runner up and the um, first runner up was Avery and our second runner up was Katie and here's a photograph of of the winners. And then as they said our trunk or treat activity changed. It used to be a monster dash 5k. Anybody want to run 5k? We did it last year. All right. Well, now you get the trunk or treat because <laughs> they're moving it to a trunk or treat and a car cruise. And again, proceeds are for Jake Wardowski's uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation um, in memory of Jake, who we lost here about a year or so ago. So the benefits of Make-A-Wish and Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. So we have our uh, um, student council and hands for service clubs putting together that trunk or treat event, which should be pretty neat. Our student athletes of the month, as we said, Ronnie and Sydney, there's their photo. See, we got to coordinate better, huh? All right. Mine has a photo, though. <laughs> wow. So the Arrowhead, North Hill student-run newspaper, the Arrowhead, released its first issue of 2019-20 this year, um, just in time for homecoming. And here's a, a quote from Rebecca, who's the, the new chief. That she's a little biased, but this is the most exciting issue of the Arrowhead that she's ever been a part of. Um, the 2019 fall collage concert series on October 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Middle School Auditorium. You can see featuring all of our bands and chorus, um, which will be a pretty nice event. Again, October 23rd at 7 p.m. So um, I think we know that Riley has been struggling with, I think, leukemia, and he had a bone marrow transplant, and he was released from the hospital in 25 days, which is a really amazing thing for a young, uh, a young man like this to be going through something like that, but he's recovering very quickly, which is, a, which is great, great news for Riley here. So the students at Westview and McIntyre held several fundraisers for Riley after he was diagnosed with the rare form of leukemia about three years ago. So you can see the cards that they wrote him. This is Riley leaving the hospital, and then you can see a photograph of the students at Westview from the, uh, from the day that um, they had for him. Ross Elementary fifth graders teamed up with One Tree Pittsburgh, One Tree per child in the Ross Township Department of Parks and Rec to plant 100 trees in Sangree Park. And each student had the opportunity to plant their own tree. And here's photographs of them planting their trees. So book tasting, I thought this was a pretty neat idea. Um, one of our special education student, uh, teachers, Jess Porter, um, talked, had a book tasting contest. So I said to Heather, what's book tasting? Like they're not eating the books, right? No, it's they're tasting different genres. And so they had plates full of different genres and she, uh, she um, decorated her classroom like a pizza shop and she dressed up like, like a pizza cook <laughs> or Luigi from Mario and Luigi. But still, the kids loved it, had a great time so, um, learning about different types of books and different genres of books and getting them a, an opportunity to sample and taste different uh, 
different types of books. McIntyre is now recognizing students of the month who demonstrate a growth mindset. These students have gone above and beyond and shown that they aren't afraid to embrace new challenges no matter how difficult. They know they are capable of learning anything and also progress growth mindset traits such as mindfulness and perseverance. And so these are our students of the month in grade three, four, five, and six. Girl Scouts of America, how about that? <laughs> Hannah Shuley was recently earned Girl Scouts of America highest honor, which is the gold award. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Hannah? Yeah, so it's basically like a service project. Um, it's 80 hours of like volunteer work in the community. And um, I did mine with animal friends and um, cat overpopulation. So I hosted like a class o over the summer for like kids in like um, third through sixth grade. And then I did um, a donation drive at Northern Library. And I also... Um, made recyclable cat toys at Shaler Library for like, um, they had therapy dogs there, it's like a cat week there too. And um, I also mapped a lot of feral cats, like where they found the feral cats, I created a map for them so they could use later. So yeah, it was like an 80 hour service project just to like help the community and it had to be like sustainable. So yeah. Good, great <laughs> job, great yeah. job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Congrats. So the middle school had their first activity night, and it was a uh, successful night. So their next activity is Halloween dress-up dance on October 25th. So you can see here the students um, enjoying some of the activities that we had for them. So Monterelli Stadium was recently ranked second among high school football stadiums in southwestern Pennsylvania. The rankings were determined by 67 WPIL and City League coaches who responded to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette survey. Friday night's football game versus Mars is our pink out game for breast awareness, breast cancer awareness game. Our cheerleaders will be collecting donations for breast cancer research during the game, and all attendees are encouraged to wear pink. It's also Raw Raw night, and girls who signed up for the North Hills Raw Raw camp will be on the field cheering with our varsity and JV cheerleaders. Kickoff is at 7:30. Come and see my daughter, who signed up for the Raw Raw camp. There you go. We're going down that path. <laughs> <laughs> this is our uh, high school So Fabulous Club, which made washcloth kits to donate to the, is that Liddell? Ladle. 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 Yeah, it is. Wow. Ladle and Hearth Soup Kitchen in Ambridge. All right. A job fair was held at the high school during the lunches this week, and employees from Macy's, Gap. Um, How are we doing? Nice. <laughs> so um, we upgraded our elementary classrooms with Promethean boards over the summer. And so we have 200 Promethean boards or active panel displays that we now have installed all of our elementary classrooms, computer labs, and libraries. Where we replace our old projector and presentation system like the one we're using here. And it was an extremely positive response from the teachers. Um, so what's next? Middle school sixth grade classrooms will be happening as we renovate those into um, a little bit fresher spaces. And our middle school library will also be receiving those Promethean boards. So this is a video of them using the Promethean boards.
Okay, thank you, Dr. Manorio. Uh, two things, those uh, touch screens are just like the ones I had in elementary school. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I also thought the student rep did a better job than you done. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. Okay. All right, let's move on to uh, education, and that would be Mrs. Mathis. Thank you. Um, I have one item today, and it's a request for the board to approve the district's application to participate in the Flexible Instruction Day program. Um, at our August 8th public meeting, we approved Resolution 2019-12, which was the district's intent to develop, approve, and utilize a Flexible Instruction Day program. Um, on August 23rd, we submit our completed application to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Um, this is all per a timeline that they laid out. Uh, they lay out for us. Um, and the Pennsylvania Department of Education is now requiring that the board approve the Flexible Instruction Day program application, um, which I have here in front of me and is also attached to the agenda. And then we need to submit board meeting minutes indicating an approval of our application to the Department of Education on or before October 11th, 2019. Um, so we had some good questions from community members that I'm going to ask um, Dr. Manorino to address. And, but um, I, I just wanted to start off by saying that my understanding is that even if we approve this tonight, that we might not see an implementation um, in this school year due to all the, um, all the pieces of, of the puzzle that have to, um, to get put into place behind the scenes and um, the systems that need to be set up. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, Real quick, the easy one's the training. It's October 14th. Uh, so we met with the curriculum leaders today about what the flexible instructional day um, program is going to look like and kind of met with them on and addressed their concerns. But um, the professional development on how to build this is going to be done on the 14th, which is um, the in-service day that we have coming up here very shortly. It's nice at the middle school and the high school that um, a lot of our teachers have, have gravitated towards Google Classroom to make this essentially virtual. And uh, so that's the direction that hopefully it's going to go. So we're going to have a discussion with that. Um, when we get to the elementary schools, it's what does this look like in K-6? And um, the, the lessons are to be class period based lessons, 40 minutes for the middle school and the high school, um, no longer than 40 to 60 minutes if it's math and ELA, and that's everything that the students would have to do from reading something to filling out um, the work that goes along with a reading activity or a math activity. So it's structured like a school day. Um, we want to make sure that it is quality instruction. Um, it's not to be a wasted instructional day to, you know, just pull something off the shelf and do it. Um, so that's, you know, really the basis behind everything is looking at how do we get quality lessons. They allow you, they being the Department of Education, to do up to five. Um, so we're going to see what we can do as far as how many we can have built. But it's going to be quite a project to have, um, to have those, those products built. The, the problem that we're running into is the window that they gave us was very short. It was about a six-week window to be able to say that we would like to do this, build what our idea was, and put it out there into action. So um, as Mrs. Mathis said, I don't know if, we, if we'll be able to use them this year. I'm hopeful that we can. Um, but you know, we're just starting the process of what do these look like for our teachers and how are they going to build them and then um, do we have them in place for all students, all classes, for even one day this year? I don't know. I, I can't answer that. Um, couple of, I'm just trying to remember the questions that, that we had. So the Beatty Tech operates on its own, so they have their own schedule. They, they can cancel without us. We can cancel without them, so the nine school districts don't work in collaboration. A lot of times we talk to each other and say, hey, North Hills is canceling. What's everybody else doing? And a lot of times, if the majority of us are canceling, Beatty will close too, or they'll close because the roads in McCandless aren't passable, which is the reasons why you know we have to take those days. Eric's looking into ways that they could do flexible instruction. I don't know if the, I don't believe they're applying for this, but it's something that they want to look into. So, what could this look like at the Beatty Tech program if they went flexible instruction? I don't know what the other nine northern area schools have chosen to do. Um, the last time we met to talk about it they were still unsure what direction any of them were going to go. Um, so that's the, uh, the Beatty component. What about busing? Dave, do you know about the busing in a situation where we would decide to call a flexible instructional day, which means we are not transporting that day, nor would we be on a makeup day? Depends on the reason for the cancellation. Snow. If you've canceled because of a dangerous uh, transportation situation, mm -hmm. we don't transport to anybody, including Beatty, even if they choose to, to stay open. 
Um, if it is closed for something other than that, say one of the schools has a water main break, you're going to transport to every school other than that one school. Um, if it were something that affected all of our buildings but didn't wasn't a, a, a transportation safety thing, we'd have to transport to any other school to open that pack. Uh, beyond that, if, if we close and uh, we have the flexible uh, day and the private parochials have to close for that and they do a makeup day that we don't have, we will have to transport for that makeup day. Thank you. Uh, what about special needs students? So that's um, in the learning plan. It incorporates ideas for students who need additional support. Um, our teachers will also be available for students that need additional support, whether it be um, through email, uh, over the phone, whatever it might be. But that's also where the seven days comes into that. So if if a student is struggling to meet the the uh, completion requirement. That's where those seven days also come in. They can meet with the teachers. It's not, hey, this is due tomorrow. Take it or leave it. Um, we, I think, um, I know Beth went to a seminar at the AIU about this, and they cautioned us about being very strict about the, these timelines. And so they, they suggested that we would go anywhere from five to ten days. And some of the schools that were approved for flexible instructional days in the first time that the, that the state put this out have ten days as that, as that marker. So it allows for power issues at a house. It allows for one computer with multiple students trying to access that at the same time. Um, so it gives the students leeway. It also gives them the opportunity to really not know or understand something, to be able to talk to their teachers about it, to be able to get those assignments and activities completed. So and that's the reason why we went with a, with a seven-day um, idea for the completion of the plan. Um, Dr. Minorino, I think if I remember correctly, the, the, the lessons are supposed to be standalone, right? So it's not if you're missing a day of school, then you go back and you just pick up where you left off, and then in the meantime, you'd be doing this. Some you know, of on them the can be. Or? Some of them can be, and I think the younger the student, the more that it's going to be like that. Okay. The older the students are, the more of our teachers are using Google Classroom, which is virtual, mm -hmm. and could could actually say that. We were supposed to be doing this today in the classroom, and this is what we're going to mm -hmm. engage our students in on Google Classroom. Okay. So um, the potential exists that we just keep going mm -hmm. in some of our classes, and that's not for all of them. And so that's where the discussions, again, on the 14th are going to be around that. Mm -hmm. it's, I, and again, my, my main focus is that this is going to be quality instruction, and it's the reason why I fought about having our makeup days around the um, Easter holiday because those days are always before the PSSA and I don't want to have any wasted days in education as we're um, approaching the PSSA so um, I'm looking for these to be quality instruction or we're not going to do them and this is I think we discussed this last time but this is not like an all-or-nothing thing right we could do a combination of some flex days and some snow Correct. days I mean I know as a parent last year I think there were three days in a row that the middle school was closed the rest of the district was closed two days and the middle school was closed on the third day and I would have been thrilled if I had some work to give my son on the third day because you know so <laughs> but but I can see how that wouldn't you know fit for every family in every situation um, what about IEP have we addressed those yeah we're okay with that uh, uh, reaching out to parents, are we going to do anything? Yeah, the, the parents are going to have to really know and understand what the flexible instructional day looks like and how to access that information. So again, once we have a strong plan on what this looks like, I don't know whether it would be through um, an e-blast of a, a brochure or something that would guide you through what it looks like to access the activities and the lessons for your children. Uh, do all the students need to log in that day? No. And uh, the amount of time that Deanna mentioned, yeah. the amount of time on a computer, what, what's a typical day? Yeah, so your typical lessons are 40 minutes, 7 through 12. They're 40 minutes for science and social studies at the elementary level, and they're 80 minutes for ELA and math. And, and so, it, again, it's, our, it's to be very cautious about how we're utilizing time and that the, that the activity is a fair representation of the teaching and learning that needs to take place during that in instructional day, and that it's not too much and it's not – too little and so that's again um, up to the teachers as they go to build that but they, they we even mentioned that today in the discussion we have about being mindful of time and what you're asking students to do at that time because um, that's not the only lesson it's going to be all of them like you asked so if we have a flexible instructional day you're going to have to do your first grade ELA your math 
your social studies, your science, and what is today? Is it day one through six? So if today's art, there should be an art lesson as well. So that's what a typical flexible instructional day would look like for an elementary student, for a high school student. Here's your schedule. You're going to go through your schedule just like you would um, any typical day. Ellie, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder there, but you know, uh, that's pretty much usual. at least the one that makes sense. <laughs> Pardon me. It wouldn't be the length of a full regular day. That, I mean, they wouldn't be having their specials, would they? They wouldn't be having, so. They would have an activity for their special, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I believe that we modeled this off of Seneca Valley, which has a successful um, flexible instruction It was day one of program. the schools, yeah. There was, um, there was a few that we gathered information from. I know Elizabeth Forward was another one. I can't remember. There, but there was three that we had their applications laid out because they were approved the first time and had been using them. And we want, just wanted to see what they had put in place because they've gone through the, the trials and tribulations of what this looks like when you actually put it into play. I think that's a really good point. With anything like this, you're going to kind of have to pilot it and be flexible and try it and see and you know we can plan for as much as we can and give everybody as much information and then we're going to go through it and it might be like a little bit of a learning curve for everybody and so I think it's going to be important to get feedback from parents and teachers and students and say okay we did this once let's see what the second one looks like I mean I think there's an advantage even if we do it once this year or twice because that's the way we're going to learn that's the way we're going to be able to build this but um, you know, I, th I think the advantage of it is you're taking a day that otherwise would be kind of a wasted day, and it keeps the students in that mode of learning, and you're not getting that interruption. And then, you know, they're also you're also not taking away from family time. You know, when you've got those days off, if we can save some parents, you know, a time that they have planned to, uh, you know, spend with their family that they don't have to give up as a snow day, you know, I think that's kind of a win-win. So, um, you know. I think we need to be cautious and, care and you know, carefully implementing it um, and have a lot of feedback loops, but I also think it's kind of exciting to try it and see if, if we can turn this into something that's going to benefit kids and families. Plus, it might not snow. Yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah, we do all that. I would, um, once we get further down the road, I mean, I don't know exactly what our timeline would be, but once we have a more solid plan, I would suggest we have, like, an open, either a school board meeting or a separate meeting where we invite the public to kind of explain what we're going to do and um, let them, you know, <coughs> raise any specific questions that, you know, we haven't really thought of yet. Um, I think that would, might be a good way. In addition, I mean, I think you mentioned the email blast. And I think, you know, just, just giving people the opportunity to. I just want us to get approved first. Sure. Right, right. No, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know. But this, well, this oh. is the final step in, like, in terms of the board voting yeah. on things and approving it to move forward. So I think it's important that we, you know, discuss it and know what we're moving into. Right. When would we know if we got approved? So we have until the 11th to turn in the minutes from tonight's meeting, and then they said that they would notify us um, in November or by November. So. <laughs> okay. But we're going to move forward, um, at, like. We, like I had said, we're, we're planning the October 14th in service days to focus on the development of our flexible instructional day activities. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, the superintendent recommends, and I so move that the board approve education item one. Second. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anything under athletics and activities, uh, Sandy? No, that I think everybody's covered it. I thought, I thought so. <laughs> uh, anything for uh, Beatty, Mr. Kelly or Mr. New, do you want to add? Anything? No. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, we can now move on to personnel, and that would be Mrs. Spade. Thank you. Personnel items are discussed in executive session. Therefore, the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve personnel items one through three. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we can now move on to uh, community and intergovernmental relations. Mrs. Reed, don't, we don't have anything unless you want to add anything. No, there are no items. There you go. Thank you. Community and intergovernmental relations. <coughs> 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 
uh, Mr. Nitty, I know we don't have anything uh, in particular for under the uh, legislative, but I mean, you might have some things you might want to add. So I have a, a couple informational items. Um, the uh, index has been approved by the Department of Education, uh, and it is a 2.8% uh, or 2.6 percent increase uh, next year. So that means we we could go a maximum of 19.8 mills. Uh, in North Hill School District. Um, the Senate, well, the progress on the um, uh, charter school legislation is uh, kind of bogged down. Uh, the project in the House is out right now getting additional co-sponsors. Uh, the Senate is moving forward. However, they're having a uh, uh, hearing on the 16th of September, or 16th of October, which happens to be the Wednesday of the uh, uh, PSBA conference. They did this three years ago, or four years ago. We ended up showing up anyway. A group of us got together and uh, jumped in our cars and drove down and uh, at least made an appearance. I'm going to contact PSBA. PSBA tomorrow and see if we can maybe get a formal uh, presentation uh, by members of PSBA uh, in front of the city Senate committee. Um, that is about it uh, on, on legislative um, activity. Thank you. Thank you for the input. Policy, Mr. Kelly. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Wilgus. <laughs> there are two policy items to be voted upon this evening. Uh, the first one concern uh, is the use of school facilities, and it's a minor change. Primarily, uh, if you want to take a, open it up and take a look at it, it's uh, the way uh, a person or persons are going to ask for permission. So uh, it's a simple method of how they want to do that. And the other item is uh, the use of school facilities. Um, the athletic fields and the biggest change there I think in addition to how uh, uh, the, the reservations are going to be made online would be the increase in the um, uh, in the insurance liability the folks have to carry I believe it was uh, 500,000 before and now that liability insurance uh, both the insurance and the single limit of personal injury and property damage are each increased to a million dollars and um, the minor app application goes to a different address than it did before. So those are the two items. If there are any questions or comments. Uh, hearing none, the superintendent recommends, and I so move that we approve policy items one and two. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Let's move to finance. Dr. Nolish. Okay. First thing, I'd like to just start with an information item. Uh, last month, we approved the motion to um, refinance the bonds. Um, we had a window for some of the construction bonds that we had taken, and our goal was to um, yield a million dollars in savings. And I'm very happy to say that uh, the bonds sold and our proceeds were $1.4 million. So we did even better than we thought. Um, so this is, in effect, this will let us pay. Now, we can't get excited about spending that $1.4 <laughs> I do want to caution everybody about that because uh, we're taking it on the back end so that we pay the bonds off early, which is the fiscally responsible thing to do. Um, and it moves us, it, so we'll end up about a year early in paying those off, and that moves us closer to our goal of operating without any debt because long-term we know we're going to need investment in facilities, and so the closer and the sooner we can get to operating without debt, then we've got flexibility, we've got options when that time comes that we need to make those kind of investments. So that's very good news, and I want to thank Mr. Hall and Mr. Muth for their work in making all that happen. Um, so moving on, um, <coughs> we have regular monthly time to pay the bills. We have general fund bills. We have capital project fund bills, which are um, small this month. They're the la some last um, finishing things that we did. Um, on the sensory room project, there's a little bit um, finishing up the family consumer science project in the high school and a little bit of work on the stadium hillside. 
Um, so nothing that was um, significant in terms of funds. And those were all projects that were had been ongoing and wrapping up. Um, food service fund bills, item number three. Item number four is budget transfers. And item number five is payroll for the month of September 2019. So the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that the board approve finance items one through five. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Nolish. Speaking you. for Mr. Burnett, we do not have anything under support services. Uh, before we close the meeting, or is there anybody from the public who wants to comment on non-agenda non items from our standing room only crowd? Okay, that being said, I will move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.